everybody. Welcome. My name is Ophira Eisenberg. Um, you might know me as the host of NPR's Ask Me Another. It's my pleasure to be here at 51 Fest. And it is my pleasure to have a bit of a chat with the inspiration and the woman whose story this is all about, the real Brittany. Brittany O'Neill, everybody. Thanks for having Hi. me. Uh, I got to say, uh, this is a great day to go to the movies, <laughs> and I, I've watched this a couple times because I had the advantage of watching it beforehand. Last scene, I still I get teary-eyed, third time through, teary-eyed. Every time. Me Every too. time. But this is your story, and I, I want to find out all uh, how close it is and how far it is and what your involvement is, but when you watch this depiction of your life, I mean, how does that feel? Yeah, it's definitely strange and surreal and exciting uh, and extremely vulnerable. Yeah, uh, which uh, I, you know, I think is this, it's at this day and age when we're sort of always showing the most idealized version of ourselves via social media and whatever. Yeah. I think that it's it's important to be vulnerable and show, uh, you know, a portrayal of a very flawed uh, and normal human. I guess. Uh, yes, and when you're watching a, a great, great portrayal by Jillian Bell, I don't know how close it is, but she's a fantastic actress, and this is, I mean, so yeah. well done, yeah. right? She's so done. you're watching someone totally different, obviously, doing this, uh, but it still t touches you like it's... Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously, I connect with the story a great deal. Yeah, uh, so it's very close. There, the emotional journey is dead on. I mean, there are a lot of details... You know, Paul created a story end to end, and it had to, you know, be a nice full experience for a movie. So there's a lot of scenes, characters, discussions, situations that are not accurate to real life. But the emotional journey and the, um, you know, wanting more for yourself and and trying for more and failing a lot, but still trying is is definitely dead on. And Jillian, uh, we didn't meet until. Uh, towards the end of filming because it wasn't important that she per is like specific to me in her portrayal. It just had to be, you know, her own version of the character through Paul's script. Um, but I, I thought that she was incredible and, and really captured what I went through. Yeah, uh, and I, I just want to let everyone know, we're going to talk and there will be a chance at the end to ask questions from the audience. But when you say Paul, let's just be clear, Paul Downs... Uh, Calazo. Calazio. Yeah. Uh, so that, friend of yours. Yes, we've known each other since like 2003 or four. We went to undergrad together. Uh, Here in New York? Yep, and NYU. Okay. Uh, and we were close friends. That checks out with the movie. Doesn't it? <laughs> Uh, and we um, at one point ended up becoming roommates. And so it was during that time that I decided to make this big life change. He was a huge part. At the time, I think we were both working from home, so we had a lot of like very deep, exploratory, self-reflective discussions a lot uh, because I was at a point where I just felt like I wanted more for myself. Um, and so he was... Um, a really big part of me making the decision to make the change, learning the steps that I should take to make changes, and and he was my outlet for a lot of what I was going through as I, you know, made various changes in my life. Um, and he, it wasn't until I, I was actually still in the process of um, training for the marathon and doing a lot when he uh, told me that he was r working on a script about it. And this was still like eight years ago now. Um, okay. So it, it was, uh, and we were still living together at that time. And he was, uh, he was like, you know, I just want to let you know I'm writing a movie about you. <laughs> and I was, I was like, oh my God. Uh, he was like, it's called Brittany Runs a Marathon. And, and the, like when you run a marathon, the, the, for your first marathon, you're 100% not supposed to have a time goal, uh, but I did, uh, because <laughs> I like, <laughs> and when he told me he was writing the movie, I was like, what's her time? Um, and he was like, she doesn't run it, it's about distance traveled, and it's the journey, not the thing, and yeah. and because uh, she gets injured, and at the time, we didn't know that I, I what I thought was just like a, a little small ankle like tweak in my last half marathon it turned out being an injury that kept me out of the marathon for two years. Um, for two years. So, yeah. So it sort of was like my life mirroring the movie, mirroring my life, and they kept sort of like feeding into one another. So just to be clear, Paul wrote fictionally that you were the character of Brittany was going to have an injury. Yes. And then you ended I up with an injury. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's terrifying. It is. I know. 
So th the first, uh, the beginning scene of this movie in your life would have been 10 years ago. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, 2011, so okay. yeah, nine, yeah, eight or nine. Okay, yeah. Uh, and you're at NYU, and you, you and Paul, what are you studying? I was studying um, th uh, theater directing and design, mm -hmm. and then I, I ended up moving. Now I work in human rights at the International Rescue Committee, resettling refugees. Um, but uh, at the time, I thought, yeah, right, yeah, great. Um, um, so by the, when we were living together, we had actually been out of school for a while, and I think I had already decided not to work in theater and was like working for a transportation management tech startup. Just I, I went through a lot to like you know discover my path as we all do. Um, so uh, yeah, we had met I think like six or seven years prior at NYU together. Yeah, and in this story, the catalyst for the character of Brittany finally deciding that she needs to meet a change is actually going to see a physician who right. basically serves her up the hard truth. Was that, is that? No, that was like, because there needed to be like something to go fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Something that's like, hmm. Uh, but it really was just a, a, a lot of my dissatisfaction with myself. I wanted to like myself more. And I was trying to learn how to, uh, for me, the best way to do that was outside in, you know, to like, right change outside and sort of, and you know, obviously, as you see, it leads to like a lot of learning about yourself, challenging yourself, discovering that it's not actually about um, your body. For, I mean, maybe for some people it is, but for me it, it wasn't. And it's still something that's like constantly, I'm always uh, sort of riding both sides of that, uh, that did, coin. Did, uh, I mean, I think we all have done this with challenges where we're trying to, I don't know, find self-worth. Uh, were there a lot of incidents where you were making progress and pushing people away? Yeah, oh yeah. That, and honestly, like I didn't uh, really fully realize that until like reading versions of the script yeah. that he would show me. And I, I still like to this day, I'm like, every time I see this movie, I learn something new about myself. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> great, if I recommend it. It's better than therapy. Have someone write a movie about you. Like, <laughs> get out you a lot farther. Okay, so this, this time watching it, how many times have you you watched it? Uh, it's like six or seven now. Okay, six or seven. Wow. Okay, and this time, what did you have any like? Oh yeah, that that was that's my learning moment. Um, this, this time I was just terrified. I have like some friends seeing it, so I just was seeing it through everyone's eyes and being terrified. But actually, <laughs> nice. I would, I'll say how enjoyable <laughs> for you. <laughs> the the biggest, uh, honestly, when we premiered it at Sundance, yeah, that was the biggest learning moment for me, like it, yet, which was you know. I, before that, it, a movie coming out was like, it can die at any time, you never know, Is, are people ever gonna actually see it? So it wasn't real to me. And then when we were doing a Sundance premiere, I was like, oh, I have to look like an after photo. And it really sort of like sure. set in motion a lot of stuff again. And then like I was, you know, making jokes with my friends like, oh, I can't eat, I got Sundance in two weeks. And then I like sat in a theater with 1,200 people and watched a movie about a girl that obsesses over her weight and like realizes it's the wrong thing that she's focusing on. And I was like, oh, right. I just like did it again. Um, so, and like that honestly has probably been the, the biggest um, turning point for me in realizing that like it's still not about that. <laughs> like you don't, yeah. you don't have to choose that as your metric. Right, uh, did you also have a, a bunch of people in your life that were so clearly not supporting you? I wouldn't say um, a bunch, but I definitely like took stock of, of who I'm investing in uh, both friends and and colleagues and and it really was like learning where to find validation and that like it, it, to make sure that you are valuing people that will value you and want the best for you yeah um, and I sort of joke um, with my husband that I've like created a 360 degree friendship circle now of like six or seven people that I I can go to for perspective on any number of things and it's uh, that I would say like learning to really lean on your friends and and trust that they want the best for you and that you don't have to um, meet a certain goal look a certain way achieve a certain anything to trust that they do actually just love you and want to help you uh, has has been a, a, a huge part of the experience as well getting teary-eyed again <laughs> uh, no that's great do you have uh, do you still run I do I run much less because I am very injury prone so I do like you know like 
two miles and then some mobility work and then, you know, strength training. But I'm, the fitness is still a really big part of my life. Yeah. And did you join a runner's group? Yeah, I joined uh, North Brooklyn Runners when I um, was training for the marathon. And that was hugely helpful because when you're going on a run for like three or four hours training, it's hard to keep going. And so there was just always like someone new to chat about like, well, how are you preparing <laughs> your food that you like take with you and put in your pocket and all the like <laughs> stupid things you have to figure out when you're trying to run a marathon. Uh, and was your very first time one block? No, my very first time was was uh, two miles on a treadmill because I was too embarrassed to do it outside. I just like felt very out of place. Um, and I actually was talking about that with Paul the other day, and he was laughing, thinking about a scene where like she like steps out and is like oh, two miles. It's like doesn't have the same effect as like one block. Right, sure. Uh, but two miles uh, sounds huge yeah, to me, actually. Yeah, yeah. totally. And it, it was awful. Like it was it it still whenever I do any running, the first two miles are the worst. And for some reason, like, after that, maybe it's just because, like, endorphins kick in and you start to, like, feel a little better as you're going. But it was definitely not a pretty two miles, and it was not easy. But it, you know, sort of eased me into understanding that, like, this can be a thing that I do. And that you're able to do it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even mentally, uh, that is, like, huge. Now, I know, actually, by round of applause, I think there's some running groups here, people that run over there. Hey. <laughs> Particular yes, it, hands in the air. What's what's the running group? Uh, we're the Woodside Queens. Queens run Woodside Runners. In this movie, she's running with the. It's in Queens, it's right? In, yeah, it's in Queens. Queens. Yeah, that's yeah, you guys. <laughs> but you were. You said you were in Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah, I was in Williamsburg. You're, oh, you were in Williamsburg. Yeah. Okay, so you uh, you have an injury, you have a setback. I mean, I think that's one one of the things I particularly love about this movie that I know is based on your life. That I like that it's um it's not just like and then she does it. it there's so we root for Brittany and then by proxy you um, <laughs> by watching her stop and start so many times and still ultimately get there, even if the route is you know just not at all like you know just a classic stable of right. beginning middle and end it's much more uh, and that's true to your life yeah and honestly i think it's true to anyone's like uh, if, if you don't fail if you're not continuing to fail and if you let that discourage you then you know we're never going to do anything so i i love that it's very true to like this is what it's like when you try to do something for the first time or for the 10th time like it's different always there's always a new factor to take into account there's always a new challenge to overcome sometimes you do sometimes you don't like i like that it just is like yeah that's how it goes and it's okay yeah. still do it yeah and what was the actual first marathon like for you it's the, the only first and only first and only um it was incredible. Yeah, okay. it was, I felt like a rock star the whole time because you're like, there's like six people deep screaming your name because I had my name right yeah. on my thing. Um, I have still, so I had gotten married a month earlier and I was like, that was, this marathon was the best day of my life, <laughs> even though it was like <laughs> right, right after my wedding. It just was like a uh, party the whole time. And they, they, they always have, um, I think some are automated photos and some are like actual photographers, but um, when Paul was sending out the script, he wanted a photo to send out with it of like me struggling. And he was like, Can, are there any of you at the marathon? And every single photo is me smiling because I just had the best time. And there are no marathon photos of me not like smiling and totally loving it. It was really crazy. Just every step of the way. Oh, like, That's yes. amazing. Yeah. Uh, and, and obviously you finished. Yes. Uh, did you have this moment where you didn't think you were going to finish? Uh, no, Heck, I mean, I have to be honest. I like really, I really trusted my training. I really was smart about it and it worked. And I just like, I, I was um, relentless in my uh, precision <laughs> in training and prepping for it. Yeah, did you yeah. have a, a, um, the route in your bedroom that you stared I at? I did not, every that, day? I, that I did not. <laughs> I like that, that touch. Yeah, that was, was a very nice. good detail. Uh, and you said never again. No, I can't. I would. It's a miracle that I made it through once without injuring myself again. I would love to like do another feat that is challenging and impressive. Maybe it'll be a pull up. I don't know, but like I can't. I can't do a marathon. You know, you mentioned uh, just as we were talking about this. You know, at the time you were thinking about you were working um, in theater. Or that's what your idea was, and you've made this shift to be working in human rights. Is that at all? Um, you know, have it to do with this journey? A little, well, I will definitely say that like I, 
uh, my lifestyle when I was working in theater definitely lent itself to like partying and and you know when it when a show opening is over all that's uh, out is like shitty food and it just it just was like part of the deal yeah um and I but I think it was more like wanting uh, I wanted to f- uh, for me uh, at a certain point my weight and running and how far I could run became a metric for like am I capital G good as a person mm. and I just found a different metric and now I'm like I can I can say that I'm good now right like I like raise money for refugees to resettle in New York that's <laughs> that's good right so just yes. a sort of like <laughs> Yet another part of like, how can I grow and challenge myself and and want more for myself? I guess I uh, yeah. That's just that is just who you are. Yeah. <laughs> uh, were you on set for any of the filming of this movie? A little bit. There's actually a, a small shot of me when in one of her running clips, and I had a line and I got cut. What? Uh, so I, I stopped by just twice. Okay, what what to what scene did you have a line in? Or at one point, so when you run the marathon, at the end of it, you still have to walk a mile to get out, which is so cruel. Um, and it was like, <laughs> and I was a marathon worker, and it was like a joke about. I made a joke about that as the um, marathon worker, okay. but it didn't fit the you know the ending. It kind of ruined the the inspirational feel of the end. So. <laughs> And what what are you in that? It's just one of the montages where she's running. It's less than a second. You okay. see she's running. You see her from behind, and I'm just standing on a corner looking. Right, because they, they recreated, obviously, this is all fictional situation of a marathon for her to run through. Well, that was the real marathon. They, they filmed at the New York City Marathon. The, you know a- the actor. She, so she didn't run. So she ran enough to get shot running. Ah. But it was the actual marathon. This is the first time they've ever let a, f- a narrative film into shoot during the marathon. They, and they were like, do you want access to like our crane and our, I don't know, whatever equipment. They just like gave them full access. <laughs> They're like, to no the one's ever asked this. Do you want it all? They're yeah, like, literally. <laughs> yeah. And at the end, so like when she's crossing and it's supposed to look like really hard, like all these amazing marathoners who had just run 26 miles would like come up to her and grab her arm and be like, yeah, we got this. And they're like, no, get gotcha. out of the shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they kept having to do it over because Jillian was like, I'm not going to tell them not to do this. They just ran this. I've just been doing this like 20 minutes. That's amazing. Yeah, it was great. That's amazing. All right. Um, yeah, we'd love to take a few questions from the audience. If everyone, anyone has a question here, you just throw up your hand and say the question, and I'll repeat it uh, for the crowd to make sure everyone hears it. So, yes, right here. Yeah. Yeah, if they are uh, okay, you would like to know about the secondary characters, brilliantly played by these wonderful actors, the the best friend Karen, the running partner Seth, Jern, the hilarious uh, house sitter turned boyfriend. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, there. It's none of them are really dead on. I mean, Jern is very extremely loosely based on my husband who I met while I was uh, on the at that point in my life on this journey because I think it's how loosely very very okay. he, yeah very um, and <laughs> he's waving Seth, <laughs> Seth honestly is is mostly Paul the yeah. running friend um, and you know little bits of him but Catherine was just like uh, uh, totally made up I mean, really, it, it was just like uh, sh- he, Paul, really wanted like a little more depth there in, in helping pull out um, who Brittany is, and then also shedding light on like everyone has their own stuff. <laughs> um, so yeah, mostly yeah. fictional. Very good. Any any other uh, questions from the crowd? Yes, right here. I'll get to you next. Um, yeah, I still do. The question is about being blinded by your own journey because you're so dead set on a goal, basically. Yeah, I still find it challenging, um, really, because it's hard to 
to, to know when you are um, needing to be disciplined enough to focus on your goals and, and when you need to be able to um, sort of open your eyes a little bit and understand that that's not the only thing going on in the world. Um, I, it definitely is something that I, I'm constantly reevaluating. I, I, watching, I mean, reading versions of the script early on, I, I was still very much in that, and it was a good uh, way to point out to me that I was very self-involved uh, in doing the journey. But, you know, it's sort of like some things need their own incubation phase, and this did, and uh, and I, I think that I err on the side now of um, letting go so that I can be there to support and, and you know, just see others in their, their journeys too. Very good. There was one right over here. Yes. Okay, what advice do you have for people starting out on the journey to run a marathon or any journey of uh, rediscovering self-worth? Get better, mentally and physically. People want to start that have because backs. they are inspired, mm -hmm. they've watched this, yeah. they are looking at you, yeah. and they're like, I'm turning I'm my life around. I'm ready for you, I'm here for you. <laughs> uh, no, that that's part of it, that that's ha what it is, 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 is setbacks. That That's not like... Um, uh, a symptom or a sign that you're not succeeding. That actually is just the path of success is, is that. Um, I, I know that like that's, that's something that I, um, you know, uh, I went on a whole thing of like, I, I should be a trainer and I should like have, be a nutritionist. And, and so uh, like there's definitely stuff there that like it, helping people through that journey is something I'm really uh, passionate and excited about. But it, the main thing to know is just that like it's, it's, um, it is failure. Success is a lot of failures until it's not. That is the exact thing I've thought about life all the time. Just keep failing, and at the end, you get this. Uh, that is all the time we have. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much to Bridget O'Neill, and thank you to the 51st Fest for making this possible. Have a great afternoon, everybody. Thanks.